Yay! Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Denise Kavaleskis, and I am a woman's transformational love coach specializing in the healing of men and women after the narcissistic relationships, the toxic relationships, the abusive relationships. And today I want to share with you what led them, the questions that you ask, what led the narcissist to become this way? So again, in my Facebook group, I ask a couple of questions as you enter into the Facebook group. And one of the questions is, is what do you want to know? What do you want the answer to? And so today's question is, what made the narcissist become this way? Right? So mean, so toxic, so volatile, so backstabbing, manipulative, and, and controlling, and how did they become like this? So as always, if you find any value in this video or any of my other videos, please smash that like button. This helps the channel grow so that I can reach more men and women and help them understand and heal from narcissistic relationships. Um, if you want to know, get notifications, hit subscribe and YouTube will let you know when I upload a video and then always comment below to ask questions, show your encouragement. Um, and believe it or not, when you comment, you help other people. I know on my YouTube stuff, like the people that I follow, I always go to the comments always. And I, even if it's like a song or like anything really, um, and I read them, maybe not all of them, but I read them and, um, you know, thumbs up if I agree with them. I don't really do thumbs down. I think that's mean. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So what led the narcissist to, to, to become this way? This is a very common question that I get <clears throat> because there's a lot of confusion for the other person. Like you can't fathom the idea of how could somebody be so mean backstabbing? How could somebody be so, like I said, volatile and just so, uh, uh. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to share, I'm going to, I'm going to share with you my experience of what I know from raising one. My son is just like his father. Um, a lot like his father. I won't say just a lot being married to one for over 20 years and having what I now to believe a sociopathic sister. So sociopaths, and I'm not a doctor. I have not diagnosed this. This is purely educational. This is based off of my experience being in it and the research that I've done since working and helping women and men to heal from narcissistic relationships. Um, I know that sociopath and psychopath, they all carry the narcissistic uh, traits. So that's how I know that. So recently, my sister has popped up again. Yay, hi. Um, with her nastiness, her out of the blue, like literally nothing triggered. I, I didn't do anything, right? There, it's not like I sent a message or a text or talked to a family member and said, blah, blah, blah. No very random, very sporadic, but I'm going to share with you about her and my son because you're asking what led the narcissist to be this way. So let me start with her. My sister is a middle child. So I know that from early on in her childhood, she had the middle child syndrome. Um, I'm not the first born. I'm not the baby. And so there was a gap in there where she felt like she wasn't getting the attention that she wanted. She got hand-me-downs, but so did we really. Um, that's just how we grew up. And so I remember at an early age, she felt, she felt neglected. She felt like uh, she wasn't good enough. She felt like she was, um, you know, like the leftovers, so to speak. She never felt like she was special in a way, because she wasn't, like I said, the first and she wasn't the baby. There was three of us. I'm the oldest. And then we have a younger sister. So there is 
so not to say that we didn't go through emotional abuse because we did um it wasn't extreme but we did go through so there's always abuse involved right um it just depends on the levels but most people think that narcissistic people how did they turn out this way well they went through extreme abuse or extreme traumas they went through a lot in their childhood well if i'm thinking about my sister she really didn't i mean the way I view our childhood was our parents did the best they could with what they knew. No, it was not perfect. It was not. No, we didn't have extravagant or even like nice vacations. We had, you know, we lived in Florida. So we basically our vacations were somewhere in Florida. Uh, we didn't stay in hotel, you know, fancy hotels or anything like that. But we had, we had stability. We had one roof that we lived under our entire life. We had one mom and one dad, so we don't come from a divorced family. We didn't have step parents. We didn't have step children. So there was a lot of good things to look at. So how did she become this way if there was all of this, like I'm stating, stability and all that? Um, and that's where there's a fork in the road for all of us, all of us, because there are people that went through extreme abuse and didn't turn out to be a narcissistic person or a sociopath or a psychopath. And then like I, I'm describing, there's people who didn't and then they did turn out this way. So now let's flip that, okay, to my ex who did go through some traumas and dramas growing up, um, a lot of psychological abuse um, and he didn't have any step parents, but he did come from like, a lot of instability, um, moving around a lot, and his parents were also very not all there, <clears throat> let's just say, meaning they taught him how to lie, they taught him how to deceive, be manipulative. I'm gonna give you a perfect example. So one of the things that my, my ex-husband used to share with me was the time when so he had three brothers, and this was a time when his, he took his brother's bike that he wasn't supposed to, he took it out of the house, I guess the bike was in the house, and um, used the bike, and it got stolen. So what his mom did to cover up that he took the bike out and it got stolen under his care, she, and she pulled him in, obviously, because he was a child, pulled him into a story they made up where they, she came up with the idea, their house got broken into. This is going to get a little, like, nutty. The house got broken into, got ransacked, and they took the bike to cover up for my ex not getting in trouble. So that is a... a a prime example of how he was taught how to lie and manipulate and control a situation, right? So the brother never knew that his brother actually took the bike out and that's how it got stolen. The brother always thought, and so the rest of the family, that the house got broken into and the bike got stolen. Do you see that psychological abuse? not only to the brother, the one who owned the bike, but to the child, my ex, to the child, teaching him how to be so deceitful to his own brother that he loved, right? They're very close. So there's two, so there's two scenarios. There is the scenario that there was not an extreme abuse. Um, perhaps even the child was um, an only child, or pulled from the rest of the children and put on a pedestal, there is that scenario. So there really isn't like extreme abuse because that is abuse too. Um, and then the other part is that they do come from abusive situations and felt the need to um, learn this behavior and use the behavior. Because let's be real, we all learn, you know, messed up behavior from our parents, but did we take that and use it in our adulthood? Most of us didn't. Most of us knew 
at the time that it was messed up behavior and we just, we didn't follow it. We didn't use it in our adulthood. So that's how um, a narcissist becomes a narcissist. It's literally what they're shown, how they're treated, um, either they're neglected. And so because nothing was about them growing up, then when we get to that fork in the road, they decided, well, everything's going to be about me or everything is about them as a child, right? I.e. only child. And so if everything's always been about me as a child, I'm going to carry that with me into adulthood and everything's going to be about me in my adulthood. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments if that helps you. If there's any confusion, I can always do a part two of the video and, and dive deeper into it. But I just wanted to give you a glimpse to answer the question of what led the narcissist to become this way. Because it is when you interact or are married to or, or come across like a coworker or a boss or whatever, and you see these people for what they are, and you can't relate to the, the evilness, really, they're evil, then it is hard to understand, like, how did they become this way? Like, what, W-T-H, what happened? What happened? So I, I can understand where there would be, like, confusion of, like, and especially when you come into the relationship and you were nothing but nice, kind, loving, supportive and all of that and still you got treated the way you got treated which was extremely poor bad i mean i know it's worse than that but i'm just using those words right now so i hope that helps if you got any takeaways any value from this please smash that like button subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more about this Leave your comments um, below. Let me know how this lands with you. If you have any more topics or questions that you'd like answered, please also leave that in the comments below and I will see them and I will respond to them and I will copy and paste them and use them for video specifically answering your question. And then, of course, in the description below, I'm going to put the Facebook group where I have a ton of videos in the Facebook group, a ton of training posts and all kinds of information, not only education and understanding, but the um, teachings, the healing, like how do you heal from this? Because ultimately that is what you really wanna know. You wanna know how can I move past this? How can I heal from this? How can I create the most amazing life for myself? You've been through the ringer, you've been through the crap, you've been through the crap, the, the S-H-I-T, I don't know, can I curse on YouTube? I don't know. You've been through that, the Shih Tzu, and now you're like, I'm ready. I'm ready to be happy. I'm ready to be loved. I'm ready to love. I'm ready for my kids to have somebody who's positive in their life. I'm ready to live in my dream home. I'm ready to get married again. I'm ready to, you know, whatever that is for you. Um, I share all of those things in the Facebook group. All right, my loves, have an amazing day and I'll see you on the next video.